Let's see how you can create animated blocks in Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves in Intelligent Ones More. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding animated blocks with custom models to Minecraft, similar to what we've seen last tutorial, where we've added a custom animated item. Now we're going to do an animated block. Once again, this is going to use a gecko lib. So if you've not added this to your project, I did this in the first entity tutorial. So I link that in the top right corner so you can check that out. It's not very hard, but that is definitely required. So the block is going to be a little more complicated than the item because, well, I mean, it requires an item in and of itself as well as all of the block stuff. But first of all, of course, we need a block, right? So the block is going to be this beauty right here. I've already created this with the great name animated underscore block, of course. And you can see this is how it looks like. It's nothing crazy, nothing special, but it will work for our purposes. So you can see basically a gold block here and just a few platforms. Once again, when you're creating something like this in Blockbench, number one, you're going to need the GeckoLib Animation Utils plugin right here. That's very important. And then when you create it, you need to make a new animated model right here. You can just call this test, for example, and then make sure under file gecko lib model settings that it is turned to block and item. And then you can basically create it. You can add your cubes, size them up however you want, but be sure to add groups here because otherwise you can't actually animate anything because the cubes are not animatable, the bones are animatable. So keep that in mind. But for now, we're just going to discard this and look at this particular block bench model right here. This is of course available to you as well as all of the code that we're going to write in this tutorial in the description below, get a proposal and individual just as well. So let's think about this. We have our finished model right here. Let's go to the animate tab. And then what I've animated is exactly the gold block right here once again just with an up and down movement with a sine wave nothing crazy nothing insane going on just a little bit of a movement and that is pretty much all that i have added here so what do we need for our block well for our block once again we're going to go to file export export gecolib model this is going to export the geo json file once again now i've already prepared this so this is why i'm going to replace it here and that's going to be fine the geo json file determines the actual shape of the 3d model right here then we also need something on display so if we go to the display here you can see i've changed the display on how it basically looks you know third person left first person right first person as well a little bit on the head you know that doesn't really matter on the ground that's going to be fine. And then most importantly, in the frame as well as in the GUI. The GUI is probably the most important one, how it looks like. So how do we export this? Well, we export this by going to File, Export, and then going to Export GeckoLib Display Settings. So you can see animated underscore block dot item dot JSON. Now, I personally, I'm going to call this animated block dot JSON because this is just going to be our item model file but that's going to be fine. We're just going to export it and that should be fine. And then under animate, what we want to do is once we have our animation here, we when we go to this tab, this up here, the animation will appear and we can then go to export animations. We're going to choose the idle animation, of course, which is the only one. If you have multiple ones, you can choose which ones you want to export. And then we can just hit confirm. This is now going to be called the animated underscore block dot animation dot JSON. And of course, I will replace it once again. So as with the item, we have three different JSON files that we want to export. The geo model JSON file that's responsible for the model itself, the block model JSON file that is responsible for, well, the display settings, and then also the animation JSON file that is responsible for the animations. Of course, we also want the texture. I've actually shown how you can sort of mess about with the texture in the animated item tutorial. I will link that in the top right corner as well so, the, so that you have this. It's actually very straightforward. But of course, in this instance, the actual texture is going to be available to you as well. Right, so let's switch over to IntelliJ and let's see what we can find. So in the block, as I've said, we're going to need a few more things because our animated block has to be a block entity. There is sadly no way around it, but it's going to be fine. We've added a block entity before, so this shouldn't be anything too crazy. So we're going to start by adding the actual block entity class. So in our block package, entity package, we're going to right click new Java class, and this is going to be the animated block entity. There you go. This is going to extend the block entity class right here from netminecraft block entity and it's also going to implement the iAnimatable interface let's hover over this implement methods this is going to implement the two methods for the interface and then let's create constructor matching super as well that should be pretty much all that we need for the time being we then want a private animation factory called factory equal to a new animation factory and then passing in this particular iAnimatable here in the get factory method we're then just going to
to return this.factory. And then we've seen this plenty of times before, the register controllers method as well as the predicate. We're just going to copy this over quickly. Once again, of course, all of the code available to you in the description below, get a repository and individual just as well. You can see the idle animation here is going to be playing, well, basically always. And that is pretty much all that we need in this instance. So this is the entire block entity done, except for a tiny thing. So we actually want to get rid of the type right here. And this is, of course, going to cause an error. That's going to be fine. Inside of the block entities, we're now going to register it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this line right here. And this is going to be an animated block entity. It's going to be animated underscore block underscore entity. And then we're going to duplicate this as well. I'm going to assign the animated block entity. And this is going to be not the Mithril Blaster, but an animated block entity and then we're not going to call the mithril blaster but we're going to call the animated block entity colon colon new here we don't have the block in yet so we're just gonna we're not actually gonna pass it now we're actually gonna make it a deliberate error right here so that we don't forget it that's always a good idea to do this and we can then switch back to the animated block item right here and make this error go away by just putting in mod block entities that animated block entity and with that the block entity class has been finished and we can basically close this and then proceed to do the rest so let's then continue along with the actual animated block because that's the next thing that we're going to need we're just going to need a custom block so we're going to make a custom block right here animated block there you go this is going to extend the block with entity class and then we're going to hover over this implement methods just going to be the create a block entity method and then hover over this create constructor matching super and we also want to override one more method and that is the get render type method because right here what we want to return here is the block render type entity animated there you go and here with the block entity we just want to say new animated block entity passing in the position and the state and that would pretty much be the block as well we can now create that block in our mod blocks class what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take the decorenda sign block that's going to be fine and this is going to be the animated underscore block same with the name here animated underscore block please note that we're using the register block without block item method here this is a custom method that I've made that's just going to create the block itself and this is going to be an animated block because the actual item we're actually going to have to create in just a moment as well so this is just going to do this this is going to take actually a material so we're going to say material let's go with metal that's going to be fine the animated block is probably protected yeah that's going to be fine changing this to public and then we should be golden there you go that is all of the things that we need in this case and we can then change this in the mod block entity class right here, right as the second parameter here in the create method. We're just going to say mod blocks that animated block. And now our mod blocks entities is also correct, and the mod blocks class is also done. So the question is, are we finally done? We're not quite done just yet. We have now have to go into the item package and in make a custom item here as well. So we're going to make a custom animated block item. So this is going to be the animated block item. This could in theory be the same for all of your blocks as well. You don't have to create a new block item every time. This is going to extend the block item and it's going to implement the I animatable. Because otherwise we will not be able to get the actual texture for it. So we're going to implement the methods, these two methods. And now you will see this is very similar to the actual item that we already have. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. So what we can do is we can pretty much just copy all of this in here and then just paste it in. We just have to change the name. So I'm just going to copy this name and change it right here. And then in the constructor, the only thing we want to change is that it also takes in a block as its first parameter. And then we're just going to pass this on right here and just import the block, alt and enter, import the net micro block class. And there you go. All of this, once again, of course, is available to you in the description below. Get a pass or an individual just as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to have it play the idle animation. I believe that you could do this and then it should play the animation as well. Although I'm not 100% sure about this. So we're just going to, I'm just going to comment this out and then we're going to see. But apart from that, the block item is done. So we can now create the item in our mod items class. So going into the mod items class, we're just going to duplicate the animated item. And this is going to be the animated underscore block underscore item. Same with the name here, animated underscore or block but this time without the item actually and this is the animated block item first parameter of course being a block so mod block start animated block there you go and that should be pretty much all that we need for the block item itself now the block item here needs the same two renderers as we've seen with the animated item as well so what we can do is we need both of these model and render as well so what i can do is i can do them individually, drag them into the same folder or the same package here, and then I can change the name while holding control. We can say animated block item model, 
And then I can do the same with the renderer animated block item renderer as well. I just have to change this to a new animated block item model and then this to the animated block item as well. We're going to go into the block item model here, changing this to animated block item. And then I have to change the actual parameters here as well. And then we're almost done. Just changing the item to block right here, changing the item here to block as well. And then last but not least, changing the item here to block as well. There you go. That should pretty much be all that we need in this case. And then all of the errors should also be gone. So once again, this is why I did the item first, because the block actually requires the same things that the item does as well, and some more as well, because we still need animations for our custom block. So what we're going to do here is in the entity package, we're going to make a new client package. And then we also have to create a renderer and a model for this as well. Now, the good thing is that the actual model, I believe, is literally the same as this one as well. So what we can do is we can just copy this over as well. So this is going to be not the animated block item model, but the animated block model. There you go. And that should actually point to exactly the same things here in this case. Uh, now the texture is actually going to be different. This is actually under machines animated block PNG, but that's fine. And then this, of course, also has a change in the block item itself. So that's going to be fine. This, of course, once again, just points to the texture. We've not added this yet, but we're going to add this in just a moment. And then the renderer is actually a little bit different. We actually will create this newly. So this is an animated block renderer. There you go. This is going to extend the geo block renderer of type animated block entity. Oh, this is also very important. We actually have to change this in the item here as well. There you go. And then this has to change as well. Don't forget that. There you go. Now the block model is done. And then here we're going to and create constructor matching super, I believe. I think we can keep this in here. We just want the animated block model here. And then also we want to get the render type and we want to return the following. Let me just change this up a little bit. Um, let's go with something like this. This is going to return the render layer dot get entity. We're going to choose translucent entity translucent get texture location, and then passing in the animatable. That should be pretty much all that we need right here. And this is, I believe, all of the code that we need except for the registration. And this is, of course, once again done in the tutorial mod client class right here. So this is going to be, first of all, the actual item, geo item renderer dot register item renderer mod item start animated block item new animated block item renderer. There you go. And then the second thing is going to be the block entity renderer registry that register mod block entities that animated block entity animated block renderer. This is going to be this one right here, colon colon new. Now we're actually getting an error here. Now the reason for this is because this is actually wrong. We don't want the model to be put in here. I believe we can also just keep it empty and then it should work. No, we actually do need the context. That's going to be fine. We want to put in block entity renderer factory this one right here dot context and just call this context and then never think about this again because we don't need it but then this should work as well so keep in mind that you have to change the constructor here in your block renderer class as well right after we've added this let's go on to the json files now most of them should be fairly easy to do because we've already exported all of them from block bench before but this is just going to be the animated block animation first of all there you go once again with the idle animation and then we also have the geo file so this is the animated block dot geo there you go let's actually close all of this craziness up here then let's add the translation as well because why not so this is going to be the animated underscore block same here animated not or but block there you go and then last but not least or not quite last but the block model so the block model that's very important that is actually the model that we have exported so this is going to be the animated block json there you go this looks like this right with this texture and stuff like that this is the block model json file while the item model json file is going to just be a normal item model json file for any type of block so basically we can copy over the jack render leaves once again dragging it into the same folder while holding control and then just renaming it and then we just have to call it animated block here so that it points to the block model at json file and then last but not least we also want to add the texture and let's just make sure that this is under the correct 
folder right here. So this is, is in the model. You can see textures machine animated block. So that's going to be fine. So we're going to go into the textures machines and copy over the animated block PNG. There you go. And that should pretty much be it. And this is all of the things that we need to do. As you can see, a little more complicated than the just the item itself, especially because you will need a custom block entity. But the good thing is that when you have a block entity, you can also then do a few more things when it comes to the animation. And yeah, this is pretty much what we're going to need. So now, after we've added all of this, let's see if it works. Oh, before we're going into the world, let's actually also call the non-opaque right here, just so that we have this that is going to make a lot of sense. And then we can basically take a look at it. So let's see. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft again. So let's see the animated block has been added. And as I've said, the item itself is not animated, but the block itself is. So when we set it down, you can see it basically animates and they are independent from each other. So what you can do, or oh, the, the particles we're going to fix in just a moment. So what you can do is a really cool effect. So there's a really cool effect. What I can do is I can just set them down one after another. And if I roughly do it correctly, then you can basically see a sine wave going up and down in between them. That is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That is pretty much how easy it is to add a custom block with animations Minecraft. Right, when it comes to the particle textures, very easy fix in the block model itself in the animated block right here, what you can do is you can add a textures field right here. So we can say textures, there's going to be colon and then curly brackets. And then here, you're just going to say particle, very important that this is article, there you go, number one, written correctly, and number two, singular, and then you can define any type of block that you want the particle from. So for example, for my custom block, it makes sense to use Minecraft block, smooth underscore stone, there you go. And then the particle should also be fine. Yeah, and those are all of the steps that we need to take to add a custom animated block to Minecraft with GeckoLib. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. So, yeah. <laughs>